Have you ever been watching a crime show where someone is about to be declared guilty? There was only one eyewitness to the crime who says the accused is innocent, but the jury's not sure they can trust his testimony. The judge is ready to give his verdict and send the guy to the clink for 20 years, when all of a sudden they bring in a second eyewitness, someone else who'd actually seen and heard the same things as the first eyewitness. The power of these two witnesses together is enough to save the innocent man. Yay! And what if there have been three witnesses? Or four? Multiple eyewitnesses can confirm the truth. And in Fayette, New York in 1829, there lived an amazing family that became eyewitnesses to the Golden Plates. Oliver Cowdery had a friend in Palmyra named David Whitmer, who was also a seeker of truth. They discussed different religions, including Joseph Smith's story. And later, when Oliver began acting as a scribe for Joseph, he wrote to David saying he had found the truth. But soon, persecution and harmony began to interrupt the translation process and threaten Joseph's life. Oliver wrote David asking for help. David read the letter and immediately felt the need to help Joseph and Oliver so that they could finish the translation of the Golden Plates. But David's father reminded him that he had to plant his wheat crop before he left. It was late spring and tons of rain had kept them from planting. And now it had to be done or his family would suffer big time. He prayed about it and felt impressed that he needed to take care of his own family's needs first. This is where the miracles began. Early the next morning, David went to plow but found his plow in the middle of the field. During the night, someone had plowed nearly seven acres. Who plows in the middle of the night? He had no idea who'd helped him. This was the first miracle. Once he finished plowing, David began spreading the wheat seed and found that he had so much extra energy and strength that he was able to plant in a few hours what normally took him two days. This was the second miracle. The last thing he had to do before he left was to cover the fields in fertilizer. He went to the house of his sister, Catherine Page, to get the fertilizer, but surprisingly, it was all gone. She told him that three strangers had appeared and taken the fertilizer. Then she and her children stood and watched in amazement as they spread it on the field with remarkable skill. No one knew who these three guys were. Um, three Nephites, maybe? This was the third miracle. The Mighty Angel Farming Service had come to the rescue. These miracles showed the entire Whitmer family that this was the Lord's work. And with his father's blessing, David immediately left to pick up Oliver and Joseph to bring them safely to Fayette. As Joseph and Oliver could now safely translate again, they came to Ether chapter 5, which essentially said, Dear Joseph, you can have other witnesses of the gold plates. Love Moroni. These words struck Joseph's soul like lightning. Oliver Cowdery, David Whitmer, and a repentant Martin Harris all desired to be witnesses. So they, along with Joseph, went to a wooded area to pray. Each prayed in turn, and nothing happened. Then they went around the circle and each prayed again, still nothing. Finally, Martin stood up and said it was because of him, and he quickly left the group to humble himself and pray for forgiveness. While he was away, Moroni appeared and showed the plates to the remaining three. After their vision ended, Joseph went and found Martin further in the woods, praying intensely. Moroni again appeared and showed the same things to Martin and Joseph. Joseph and all three witnesses had been shown the golden plates and other things by Moroni and heard a voice from heaven declaring that the plates were translated by the gift and power of God and were commanded to bear witness of it. These weren't perfect men. They made mistakes. But throughout their lives, they always held true to their testimony of the Book of Mormon and what they'd witnessed. Immediately after this experience, Joseph essentially told his parents, Man, I am so happy. I feel like this huge burden has been lifted from my shoulders. Can you imagine his relief? He was no longer the only one who had seen the golden plates. Now, there was another very special eyewitness. Her name was Mary Whitmer, the mother of the Whitmer family. As the Whitmer home filled up with visitors because of the translation, the job of hostess had fallen to Mary. In addition to her normal farm chores, she was in charge of the cooking and cleaning and providing beds for everyone. She didn't complain, but she was exhausted. 
I mean, seriously, have you ever had a home full of guests for days on end and you were in charge of everyone and everything? Exhaustion doesn't even begin to describe it. Now imagine that with no electricity and no indoor plumbing. <laughs> yeah, no bueno. One day, as she was going to the barn to milk the cow, Moroni met her and said, You have been very faithful and diligent in your labors. It is proper, therefore, that you should receive a witness that your faith may be strengthened. Then Moroni showed her the plates. Really? Yes, this faithful woman was the fourth witness who was shown the plates by Moroni. And this huge energy drink for the soul gave her the strength she needed to continue. Eventually, Joseph was allowed to show the plates to eight additional witnesses. And their testimony can be read at the start of every Book of Mormon. So, out of all of the witnesses of the Book of Mormon, who's the most important witness? Joseph? Oliver? Mary? Nope. The answer is you. You who have read and received a witness through the power of the Holy Ghost that it's true. Now, you may ask, me? Me? How can that be? Your witness is the most important because it really doesn't matter how many other people know the Book of Mormon is true. We each need our own personal witness from the Lord. If you haven't yet received this witness, then God has promised if you read the Book of Mormon and with a sincere heart, with real intent, having faith in Christ, pray and ask God if it's true, He will manifest its truth to you by the power of the Holy Ghost. And you too can be added to the millions of witnesses of the truthfulness of the Book of Mormon. Amazing! Now, being a witness doesn't mean easy street for anyone. And Martin is about to face his greatest trial yet. Thanks for watching. If you feel like this video has helped you on your path towards truth and Christian discipleship, share it and subscribe to the channel. And click on the little alarm bell to get notified when new videos come out. Most importantly, go study the scriptures for yourself.